Welcome to the Work Life Balance Podcast. I am Kara. And I am Maggie. Together, we're a power real estate team with the Bajetti Partners in Nashville. We believe that the hustle culture of today's driven entrepreneur who lives and works in Middle Tennessee requires balance. Today's episode is sponsored by Sunsama. It is not just a plain old to-do list productivity app. It's more like an assistant that guides you through planning your work day. Sunsama prompts you to plan your day every morning before you start work, so you're more intentional about your day and how much work you do. My favorite is that it has an overload alert, so when I plan more than seven or eight hours of work per day, I can bump back the non-essential task until tomorrow. We recently found this new app called Sinsama when they reached out to us, and I'm liking one of their features called the shutdown ritual. It's unique, and none of the other productivity tools I've tried have had this in there. So I have to plan my day in the morning and set a shutdown time. It prompts me to stop working around that time. This way, there's a clear boundary between my workday and my normal life. If there's one thing that you want to avoid as an ambitious professional, it's definitely burnout, and it's real. Everyone suffers from some degree of it, especially nowadays when the lines between work and life are so blurred. So when we found this app called Sinsama, it really helped us prevent overwork and overwhelm. Get Sinsama today so you can plan sustainable work days, prevent burnout, and start being productive. Welcome back to Work-Life Balance. Today, we're going to talk about some funny stories of 2022, followed by some intentions and vision board ideas that Maggie and I have been working on, and ending with some mantras that we uh, tend to say over and over and over again. (laughs) All right, so we're going to start first with funny stories of 2022, (laughs) because there was quite a few, I think. It was a good 2022. Eventful. Eventful, yes. Sure. Okay, so first (laughs) first funny story of 2022, and I will let Kara start us off on this, and we're going to talk about our jailbird. (laughs) Oh, oh my gosh. Okay, this is a funny one. So Maggie and I had been working with this guy for a while. Super nice dude. This is Zillow lead. Throw yeah, it was Zillow lead. We, yeah, okay. So we <laughs> show a property, we get into escrow. Everything is going smooth. And then for some reason that one fell out, right? Yeah, so, which I guess this is two stories wrapped into one. Okay, maybe kind so, of, yeah. Because it was it was his property, right? And we gotta make sure not to say names. Yeah, we're not doing names. Yeah, no names. <laughs> but yeah, so basically we'll just have to tell the whole story and then we can kind of go into okay. why everything started kind of falling out. So <laughs> the agent on the other side was not the best to say the least, was not good at communicating at all. The sellers on the other side, we were representing the buyer thought that we were closing a week after our inspection, but to kind of circle back when I went out there and met the sellers, they were telling me about all of these problems with the property followed by a very eventful story of the seller falling through the retaining wall. You just went to two different with, stories. I know, because they're kind of wrapped in the oh same one. God. They're wrapped in the same one, so okay. we have to kind of circle back. Okay. So I was out there, met these people. They were wonderful, loved them, right? But some stuff came up in the inspection that we had to kind of go back, take some structural engineers out there, whatever. So while I was meeting all of the engineers out there, the seller was just going on and on about all this crazy mm-hmm. shit that happened at the property. And she said that she was fa- she fell through the retaining wall of the property on a tractor, <laughs> almost cut her foot off, and had to literally crawl to the road where her husband found her stranded on the road because the retaining wall was not structurally sound. <laughs> and this was a property that he was going to try to buy. Are you going to say that the seller was naked when she and was found? And the seller was <laughs> naked when she was found. It was the craziest story oh I've God. ever heard in my life. Yeah. I didn't know how to handle it. I was like, oh my God, we've got to get out. Well, and we what, get out. we're representing the buyer. Yeah. So this is red flags everywhere. You typically don't talk to the seller. Like the, that's why the sellers have a selling agent. They weren't even supposed weren't to be there. there. They yeah, weren't they supposed were to be there just, and they were. So Maggie got in crossfire. So she yes. became a, like a litigator between the seller, our buyers and the seller's agent was MIA. Yes. And but a naked seller. <laughs> to get back to our jailbird story. Oh my gosh. We didn't even get to the part in that escrow of like, finding out about our jailbird situation. Right. So this, so we are in escrow on that one. We obviously bail because clearly the house is not fit no. for <laughs> sale at this point. So we, we get rid of that and we go find our jailbird, a new 
um, home. Wait, hold so, on, sidebar. This is oh. why you need to use us as your agents because we found him another home in less than 24 hours. Because really he was going to be kicked out of the house he was living in within 48. So we were really on time. Crunch. It was a dire situation. And we found him, we, we, we found him actually a way better house at that yeah. point. So, agreed. okay, so... I get a call from the lender and he's like, um, I just got like a red flag from underwriting that he can't ever get a loan for the rest of his life. And meanwhile, this was three, three or four days, right? Before closing. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah because the underwriter had run his file one more yeah. time so, because we're now in a second escrow. Yeah. So he's like, like, what's the, what do you mean? He can't get a loan. Like who I've been in the business a long time. I've never had a client that is banned from getting a loan. You no, must we have mean, done something bad. And when we say banned, we mean literally banned by the government as a whole to get yeah, a loan. You're not allowed to have a loan. You're never allowed to have your name on a loan. No. So, of course, he doesn't share this information that he um, is a naughty boy. <laughs> a straight up felon. <laughs> straight up felon. <laughs> so, we're now, like, again, we're on crunch time. He's got to be in t- into this new house, yeah. like... ASAP where he's being evicted. So he calls his sister, he gets his sister to, you know, get the loan figured out. So in the meantime, the lender and I and Maggie are like, okay, who is this guy? Like, yeah. we got to like digging, we're digging. So leave it to Google to like, you know, Google him up because we'd shown him some properties. Like if he's a felon, I had met him four or five times. Yeah, like I'm it could have sure been he dangerous. Asked, did he not ask you out on a date at one point? Maybe he at one was point, a little friendly, like a little friendly. And he was good looking. So yeah. of course, good looking felon. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Perfect so, storm. Like long story short, without getting in any details, he was running like a bad little situation and was pardoned by President Trump to get out of prison. So therefore, (laughs) he got out of prison, no problem, but he could never get a loan for the life of his, for the rest of his life. Yeah. So, pardoned by Trump. Like, what is the by coincidence Trump. Like, there? I mean, uh, this shit, you can't make this up. It's no. just like, I love it. It's a day in the life of real estate. <laughs> Total But it's like, yeah, it's such a coincidence. And we so didn't weird. know, we didn't know about any of this. The lender, Karen, I, like, none of us knew about any of this until no. maybe five days before closing on the second property. Right. So he had gone through escrow and the loan process twice at this point yeah. and we didn't know and now we were like at crunch time like trying yeah. to save the loan it was, it was insane crazy. and he wasn't gonna tell us hey by the Absolutely way ladies not. uh he president still, trump he still doesn't know that we know i don't think i mean we never mentioned it i'm no. not gonna be like hey by the way i read about you and you're actually yeah. a criminal right you're a criminal <laughs> and weird should we throw that out like really good friends with like luke bryan yeah and I mean, they're like, the ones that connected. got him pardoned like they went to yeah. bat for him with I mean, I guess we can share. It's on the internet, so it's public information. We're not sharing his name, but no, yes. not the name. But it was yeah. Crazy. He's like apparently like Luke Bryan came to bat for him in court. It was like a whole thing. So anyway, I guess that's two stories trapped I know. in one. But wow, that was an interesting one. Yeah, that I think was, it was your first. Was that your first that was escrow my first with me? Deal, yeah. Whole in her, your first my, deal ever. My first deal ever. Yeah, you cut your tooth on a good one. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> and I remember, like, in that scenario, Kara and our Linda Ryan, they were like, not even wanting to tell me because they were no. like, "Oh my god, this is gonna freak Maggie out. We need to figure totally. this out before we even tell her because she's gonna flip the fuck out." We did. <laughs> Ryan actually called me and was like, "Okay, I'm gonna tell you, but." We got to like figure out how to tell Maggie because we do not want to freak her out. (laughs) And of course I get off the bed. I'm like, Maggie, oh my God. (laughs) Because this would have been the second time that it had fallen out. And it was crunch time. He was like going to not have a house if we didn't find him something. So it was insane. That was a great story. Oh my God. And to segue into another (laughs) funny story, Zillow is full of surprises apparently and characters yes yes and our zillow rep got a got a very big kick out of out of the story but so this one was weird because so it, for you agents out there that do zillow you understand that you get like these messages and they're nurture yeah. leads so unless you get like a hotline or whatever you get a nurture lead so we got this nurture lead and it was like a paragraph long yeah it was very weird it was and i don't know weird. if we were reading them at the same time obviously at different locations but I feel like you texted me at the same time I was reading it. Like, holy shit, what are you, are you reading are what you I'm reading? reading? This? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, but I, I'm trying to figure it out. Yeah. So like long, <laughs> long story short, I think the guy was shit faced when he was writing. He it. must have been. Or he had a hell of a night. Butchered. It was butchered. So, and you know what? It was a long night because he was still in bed. Remember? Yeah. That was how it started. Yeah. As he was laying in bed. He was, was like, I'm in bed thinking about blah, 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 blah. It was so, so weird. weird. So like literally goes on and on and on and then starts to talk about 
Wait, like when I did adult videos, I think you were the girl in them. <laughs> yeah, because was it, I don't even know if it was your picture that showed up or if it was my picture that showed up, but one of the two. I mean, yeah. we have like our professional like photos on there. Our professional photo on there. But, and we're like, oh, so you think we are a porn star? Like, yeah. So he keeps going on like about that eventful um, porn moment. And, and if we ever wanted to relive it. Yeah. And it was the weirdest so situation. So Maddie circles. She goes, well, and circling back. And circling back. Did, did you want to buy a house? house? <laughs> Are you interested in buying a house in Tennessee or not? Because he essentially got to the point where he was like, well, do you want to do a video? Because we were yeah. like, I think you have the wrong person. Like, yeah. this is not me. At this point, I was like, I'm too young to be in a porn video. <laughs> and I'm too like, old. <laughs> <laughs> not too young. So you've got it mixed up here oh at some my point. God. But it was so weird. But then he kind of circled back to okay well even if I do have the wrong person like are you interested and we're like so we're creepy. interested in selling you a house and that's about it it was so <laughs> beyond so we so literally weird. call our Zillow rep and I'm like you're never gonna yeah. believe this he's like I have never heard of this before in my yeah. life I'm sitting this to like everybody to get a, ki a kick out of basically yeah. they are laughing at us <laughs> it was funny and because like Kara said like all of you that know how Zillow works it comes on like you have a name, an email, and a phone number. Mm -hmm. And it had none of those. It was just a random phone number. So I really don't even know how it got through the system. If it was, I don't, he was doing some weird shit, but he, it was He insane. was living some fantasy that you and I were not about. No, we were not. We were not living in the same world mm. as him, but. Oh my God, that was so funny. Okay, and then one for me. I had to, I had to go through some, some ish, but I was, we got a Zillow lead. Of course, there are always Zillow leads oh, that do us dirty uh, like this, but it was just a mobile home on a piece of land. He wanted it as an investment property. I kind of vetted him. He seemed cool. So I went out there to meet him and it was when it was kind of getting colder and darker earlier in the night, right? So it got to be about seven o'clock. It was getting dark, no show, no message, no nothing. So I call him a few times, no answer, no text. And then he finally replies. He's like, I'm on my way. I'm on my way. I waited an hour and a half oh in gosh. a ghetto, ghetto like part of town. Like the middle of nowhere. The town. middle of nowhere. Wasn't it a trailer like just on a piece of land? Yeah, it was just in the middle of nowhere. I couldn't see anything. The lights didn't, none of the electricity worked. I mean, it was all turned off. It was just an old mobile home on some land. <laughs> I was out there by myself just in just a 22 year old yeah. little girl. Like, I mean, I know how to work a gun, but she you does know, carry a pink Glock with her. So don't let her scare. Don't let her <laughs> I do fool carry you that gun, she's so. not locked and loaded. Yeah, And I know how to use it. So be you were calling but, me and I'm like, um, excuse me, you need to leave right now. Leave. It's pitch dark. Yeah. You're in a mobile home park. Well, not even a mobile home park. You're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, in the middle of nowhere. You need to go. And she's like, I'm going to give him like 30 more minutes. I'm like, Maggie. I know. Because you're he kept, freaking me out. He kept texting me like, hey, like I'm on my way. Just stay there. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Okay, and but, so I got to, it was like nine o'clock at night at this point and no show. And okay, but you're I was forgetting, like, okay. forgetting who showed up. <gasps> oh my <laughs> I totally forgot this part of the story. So there was a there was a little investment property right beside it also. Yeah. And this guy, belligerent drunk, okay, like at the point where he was nowhere near allowed a car, okay, nowhere near. So he was just sitting out there talking to me, chatting it up. He asked me if I wanted to come into his house and oh he was showing me a hole in the middle of his living room floor that you could literally see the dirt under his house. And he was telling me all of these stories about what happened next door at the house that I was showing. It was just a bad oh situation. And then I get a call. I finally leave and I'm like, okay, this has been too much. I'm yeah. dealing with a very drunk guy next door that is not safe. There's nobody else around. No. And I finally got to the point. I was like, okay, I've got to get out of here. So I finally leave. And this guy calls me so pissed off. He's like, I'm here. Where are you at? And I'm like, <laughs> I was Dude, there two and a half hours ago. Exactly. I just waited two hours on you to get here and you didn't show up mm -hmm. and it's dark and there is a drunk guy next door. I'm not, I'm not staying. Sorry. No. So it, it dangerous. So dangerous. I know. I was like, Maggie, pack it up. Go. It's go. not worth no. that commission uh -uh, or no. anything. And I was like having to use my phone flashlight. Like <laughs> how much is that going to do for me? I can't see 15 feet in front of me with that. So you like, crack me up. I could have been you, so run. I don't know if it's you growing up in Tennessee. You just have like such a, you don't give a shit. This kind of stuff does not freak you out like too much no. where I would be like, 
holy shit. Yeah. I mean, I, granted, yes, like that was such a story that like resonates when I had all the rentals mm-hmm. and all that bullshit. But like when you and I went door knocking for a client in Columbia and I'm talking, it was like <laughs> sketch neighborhood, like boarded houses, like it was not probably, and here we pull up in my Range Rover. Yeah. Like, probably should have drove, like, a beater car. Yeah. Like, really. It was not the neighborhood. Tried to fit in a little bit. We had a client <laughs> that is hell-bent on this one specific neighborhood because they're tearing them down and re- yeah. rebuilding it, right? So, Yeah. And so, here this cute little blondie gets out of the car. She got a little goodie bag of water <laughs> and a koozie. <laughs> She knocks on the door. It's all boarded up. And you got like, people are looking through the window. I completely forgot about this story too. Oh my God. I'm like, holy shit. I'm going like this. And like, I know. Kara's like watching me like so intensely. And then she's like, I don't, I forgot to bring my gun. I'm like, well, I've got pepper spray. It's like, give her my I'm like, well, what good is pepper spray going to do for me? I don't know. But I'm like, you're so brave. Like that was sketch too. And then there was, there was two guys, if I don't remember incorrectly, there was two guys sitting at a picnic table at the next house over. Correct. And I just walked up to him. I was like, hey, how are y'all? I handed him a koozie and a goodie bag also. You know, uh, just, you know anybody that care. wants to sell a house? Yeah, I did. And they were like, actually, we're renting this, so we would prefer it to not sell. Exactly. And I was like, okay, well, if you ever want to buy a house, call me. And they oh were like, God. okay, whatever. Like, please get out and of my please face. Please get out of my neighborhood. Oh my God. But that, oh was, my God. that was, I forgot about that. That was a little sketchy. I, I mean, we could go into all the door knocking stories i've had people slam the door in my face like yell at me but who cares it's just part of it it's fun well that's that's back to you will go the extra mile we will go the extra mile like that's it's just fun and we have stories to 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 say we survived it (laughs) yeah barely (laughs) so we were doing like before we jumped on today like our 2023 looking at our 2022 board you know We've talked about this in previous episodes. We're all about the vision board. We're all about manifesting. All about, all about mantras. Like that's just something that Maggie and I had in common from the get go when we first met. And um, so to kind of carry on with that theme, um, we looked at our board and we we're super proud. We could pretty much yeah. mark off everything on it from last year, which is awesome. And if we couldn't I mean, mark it off, we were pretty we damn were close. Pretty damn. I mean, like touching it by yeah. hair. Like so, we're super proud of ourselves. We had a hell of a twenty two. Um, 23 is looking already bright. Sure. So we had fun writing our a vision board before we, we hopped on here. And so we just thought like, if we could just talk about intentions for like just a quick second yeah. and really what it means. So I'm I don't sure. know, like. You want me to give the definition? Yeah, like okay. kick it off. So the definition of intentions, intentions are the act of stating what you intend to accomplish through your actions. So it's saying stuff like, I will do this, I will do that, rather than just saying, oh, I think I'm going to do this. Like right. actually stating, I will be a millionaire or I, I will, will sell 20 houses in a year. Uh, or I will eat healthy yeah. today. I will be present in the moment. Like, exactly. And like really, you and I have totally done that. Like our changed our frame of speaking. We have. Like I and hope, you taught me that. Yeah, it was a lot of you in the beginning. I hope I get that listing or I yeah. hope. And I'm like, no, 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 you will. will. And, yeah. and it totally changed your frame of thought. Oh, absolutely. And same for me, our frame of like language. Um, so that's like a huge thing for us yeah, is really is. like focusing on what we are going to accomplish this year, not what we hope to accomplish. So, yeah. and I think that just, and rather just than a yearly scope on that, like I will do this this year. It just take it day by day. Like sure. I will wake up at a certain time today. Mm-hmm. I will do, I will go work out today. I will eat better today than I did yesterday. Right. Because yes. I feel like every day is a fresh start. Absolutely. It's not like, you know, they always say, Oh, Monday, it's fresh start to the week. Well, great. But if you really fuck up on Wednesday, Thursday's a fresh start too. So take it, like give yourself a little grace. Yeah. And I did, I did hear people, I'll show them out, Bobby Bone, Bobby Bone show, you know, Uh, like the big 98, whatever. Well, they were hating on New Year's resolutions the other day. And I hate that because yeah, it is kind of cheesy to just, okay, yeah, the first of the year comes around and you're going to be a new person, but it's just setting the intention of how you want your year to go. And I really truly do believe that if you say it out loud, you write a vision board, even if it is the beginning of the year, it's going to change your attitude and your perspective on yourself and on life for the whole year. I agree. I mean, I, I was telling you earlier, I didn't set any new year's resolutions. Mm -hmm. I set a vision board. Like I would rather look at the big picture and what my grand scheme is. Like I can say everything. I'm going to have alcohol once a month. That's not going to happen. 
Like, I'm not going to try to set myself up for failure. It's happen. not going to happen. <laughs> I'm probably going to have a glass of wine after we yeah. air today. <laughs> but it's like, I'm not, I don't, I don't think that I want to set myself up necessarily yeah. for failure. And I, it goes back to the people that are the gym rats at the yeah. beginning of the year. Everybody's at the gym. They are. And they then really come are. February, they're all gone. Yeah. You know what I mean? So set a long-term goal. I plan on working out three times a week. Yeah. Not like stuff you know you can't attain. Anyways, side yeah. sidebar on that. No. But it's really. also like the other thing like going with that is visualization yes. and visualizing yourself and where you ideally want to be yeah. by the end of 2023. Absolutely. And that's that looks different for, for everybody. Sure. I think like really, and I think we've talked about this on the podcast in particular before, just actually sitting there at night when you are writing your goals or whenever that is, actually seeing yourself in your brand new car or mm -hmm. seeing yourself walking through that million dollar house or whatever the case may be, actually try to sit there and really visualize in your head what that life looks like for you because then that gives you some kind of like tangible goal to reach. Right. And I think that's why a lot of people on their vision boards do pictures. Yeah. Because they're really visualizing that white Porsche or yeah. that white Mercedes or that beautiful mansion, yeah, for whatever sure. it might be. And you just, I feel like when you see it, you start to believe it. For sure. I mean, for as it works. And I think that's important too, just going with your goals, having stuff that's attainable. Like you don't, you don't want to not even be in a career and say, like, if you're not even a realtor, say, oh, I want to sell $2 million worth yeah. of real estate today. Like make it realistic. I want to get my license yeah. this year. Or exactly. yeah, that would be more attainable. Stuff that. that you can actually mm -hmm. achieve because then you're just, you're yeah. dreaming at that point. Yeah. So make goals that are attainable for sure. Yeah. No, I love that. And then that also goes <clears throat> into manifesting, which we talk about a lot. And that's, mm -hmm. we say all the time, I've manifested of the life I have right now. I know, but it's well, true. it is because it's like, I've always talked to myself about my future and having a team and whatever, but I've never really shared that with anybody. Yeah. It's always been an individual thing, <clears throat> but obviously you came into my life for a reason and vice versa. Yeah. And I feel like you and I both, there's so many things that aligned for us, but we both manifested the shit out of the moment we're in right now. Oh, for sure. Including this podcast. Absolutely. That's been in my brain for at least two years and your brain for at least yeah. probably longer. at least two years. Yeah. yeah. And then it was like, wait a minute. And then our thoughts are the same when it comes yeah. to what we want to talk about. So manifest, Absolutely. it sounds stupid to a lot of people. I'm telling you it works. Yeah. And just, it's really just turning that idea into a reality and just like saying, not necessarily saying I will, but just actually putting it out loud, writing it down, writing your goals out mm -hmm. loud, writing your ideas. And that's, we talked with your dad a little bit, two episodes ago. And if you didn't listen to that episode, go listen because he's so great to um, learn from, but actually doing it, taking the idea, writing it on paper and putting it into action, or at least taking the steps to make it a right. reality for yeah. yourself because otherwise was it you didn't you just tell me that like if we, we just put it on our instagram yeah <clears throat> that was a great quote it was god i want to write I, you know what yeah, i'm going to tag it on this podcast yeah, because it was if you if it's just a goal it's just a dream, whatever. Yeah. It, it really made sense, but it goes back to that. So yeah, we'll, we'll, for sure. We'll circle we'll, back we'll to that. We'll circle back to that. <laughs> but yeah, and just making it a reality set, like I said, setting attainable goals and just trying to do whatever you can to reach them. Maybe yeah. that's baby steps, but, and not only just being a thinker, because there are so many things that, oh, I think this would be cool to do one day. Like my, one of my goals is opening a wedding venue one day. I know. And you've always said that, but I have to actually like make small baby steps to get there. So maybe even if it's as small as like making a Pinterest board of all kinds of cool wedding venues and mm -hmm. just getting ideas and stuff like that, just right. little steps to make it a reality. Cause that's on. a pretty unique goal. Oh yeah. You know, and that, that's something that I can totally see you doing cause you're I mean, you've got the brains and the creativity for that, <laughs> but like that, there is steps that you're going to have to take to make that, you know, something that's definitely different than real estate. Oh, for sure. Yeah. But what a cool goal. And that's not even necessarily like a career that I want. I just want that as like an investment. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I, I could go on forever about, <laughs> about that and I won't, but then it's goals girl. Yeah, it's and goals. that's all we can tell you is create goals. It's very important. Like this. Dream Set big too. Dream big. And that's kind of our thing too. It's like we, every time we do a vision board, we go high, we reach for the stars. And if we don't get it, then who cares? Yeah. Like <laughs> reach just, for the stars yeah. land on the moon. Exactly. I mean, we pretty much even our, hey, that's a good quote. Like that? I like that. Well, good. Cause we landed yeah, on the like stars that. this year. We did. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we only had half a year. <laughs> so, okay. This is kind of funny. So I, I, I don't know if, Maggie and I, again, we're, we're kind of weird like this, but so mantras, if everybody knows what a mantra is, it's something that you say repeatedly, right? So 
Like it's definitely used in meditation. It's definitely used in like, like therapeutical, like where you're sitting and like really trying to calm yourself. So you say a word that might like get you on a Zen or might, I don't know, create some sort of comfort for you. Yeah, comfort and yeah. just calmness. Yeah. So like one thing that Maggie and I also have in common is for some reason we see 1111 or 111 all, all the time. And I think it's, a, I don't know what, it, it's a very like. It's like an angel number and like manifestation and just like yeah. brings good energy. And it's a number that I think probably a lot of people see for some reason it's pretty common. Maybe it's not. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Maybe it is. I it might just it be because Kara and I are on our phones way too much. <laughs> and we just it may it. be a coincidence, but I mean, even when we're together all the time, we're like, oh, it's 11, 11, 11. Make a wish. And then make a wish. And then we always make a wish. So that I think comes into the mantra. Like, um, and you can make your mantra any time of the day. Like when you wake up, you maybe say your yeah. positive affirmation. That's the same every day. Like I will be present today. Yeah. You know, for Maggie is going to make me say mine out loud yes, right I now. Yes, I am. I and let me, let me preface this. that. Let me preface that really quick. <laughs> Kara was kind of, she didn't want to say it out loud because I think you, I think overall you just didn't want people to judge you for it. It is but judging. I it's kind of like. I think it's effing awesome because every woman in the world wants it. And <laughs> I didn't even think to say this on 11-11, but now I do. And now I will. So go ahead with your mantra that you say every time 11 11 I don't even know where, why it came. And I, but I've said it for years. I don't know. Maybe it's shit that I want. Like I truly (laughs) want, but I literally say. it seems to be working for her, by the way. (laughs) Thanks. I literally say rich, skinny, healthy. Every time 11 11 or 111 comes on, that is my mantra. I know it's super egotistical and shallow and whatever the hell else it is. But those are three things that I truly do want. I want to be rich. I want to be skinny. And I want to be healthy. And I also want world peace. (laughs) Also want world peace. But in the moment, rich, skinny, healthy. Those are the three important things for sure. But I mean... It can be whatever you want it yeah. to be. I mean, What's mine. Yours, Maggie? What? What's yours? Oh, <laughs> it's a little bit different, but I'm going to steal yours from, from Okay. Now. But I actually saw this on TikTok and somebody was, which I see all of these like manifestation things on TikTok mm-hmm. and a lot of it's bullshit, but some of it's not. And one girl said, um, every time she sees 11-11, she says, I'm thankful for my friends, my family, and my opportunities. Yeah. And so that's just what I've been saying every time I see it. But now I'm going to start saying rich, skinny, healthy every time. <laughs> well, but. I think I probably should say I'm thankful for my children <laughs> and my husband and everything else. But that. I think you do that in other ways i do that in my prayers because i do do my i do do my thing too but you know i you do it you find something that makes you comfort and it just becomes a mantra yeah and these well what we're kind of segueing into may not be like a mantra per se but definitely quotes that kind of bring us down to earth a little bit and i'll Mm -hmm. let Kara go first because i really liked hers and i didn't hear it until today and i really didn't understand it until she kind of explained what it means we're being like share bears today a little bit these are things that i truly nobody knows about me yeah (laughs) and i'm sharing it with the world here you go yeah she said um i don't tell anybody this and now you're making me share i know i'm like i'm kind of private about like a lot of my whatever time to open up girlfriend all right so like I, i don't without going too far into it like I don't know where this came from. I was had a very, very close relationship with one of my grandmothers, and she said it to me one time, and then she told me it was in this book. So I went to try to find it in the book, and it wasn't in the book. So What was the book? Shout it out. I don't remember what the you book was. No, okay. gosh, I was a little girl. I was probably like six or eight when she okay. first started saying it. So it stuck with me, and I'd probably say it, I couldn't even tell you how many times a day. Like, kind of weird, like obsessive compulsive about it. But it's really something I say, like, in times of, like, I need to calm myself down, or like... You know, if I get the flyer jitters, like I'm getting on a plane and I'm nervous or whatever. So <clears throat> hopefully you understand what it means when I say it. But um, it's fear knocks, faith answers, and no one was there. So meaning like something scary is behind the closed door. Like it's something's frightening you. Something's making you a little bit anxious or nervous or or there's something that you just don't, you know, it's just getting the hair on the back of your neck to stand up. Yeah. And faith answers mean, you know, your spiritualness inside your heart is there to protect you and no one was there. So it's just something comforting that I say, yeah. I've taught it to my kids. They don't like to fly. So that's like, okay, that's like their little yeah. prayer before we get on the plane or when we're scared on the plane or whatever the case might be. Anyhow, super personal. <laughs> yeah. It's not for everybody, but I mean, but that's, that's true, my though. little comforting saying that. But it's I've great heard. because I mean, if you think about it, nine times out of 10, some of the things that you're anxious about or scared about, 
you go two weeks down the road and they don't even matter. Yeah. You know, like you have all of these worries and all these fears. And now even in the day of social media, like right. everything is just so amplified that mm -hmm. it's so easy to be bogged down by fear. And just True. nine times out of 10, if you just let it go and let your faith carry you, then yeah. it's not a problem. It's not a fear. It's not even there half the time. That's so. a good way of saying it. Because it's hard to get past it when you're in the moment. Oh, yeah. But that kind of brings me or brings us to yours because yours is kind of oh, like yeah. right <laughs> off of that. And it was my grandmother, too. Grandmothers with their great advice. I but know. This one's kind of very publicized. Everybody knows this, but this too shall pass. My grandma used to always say that to us. And anytime we were going through th stuff, she was just like, okay, this too shall pass this too shall pass like mm -hmm. nothing matters in the long term you're likely not even going to think about it in a month from now or a year from now so unless it's like super super major but yeah. this too shall pass it's gonna be okay don't get too bogged that. down by it yeah that gives you comfort and yeah. knowing that like it's just a super stressful day mm -hmm. and it's gonna be fine yeah and in a, like you said in a month you won't even remember you had that day For sure something i carry with me too and we've talked about this a little bit before um is it changes the only constant in life mm -hmm. and that's so true I mean, every single thing changes. You're never in the same spot for too long. Yeah. And if you keep changing, you're never going to be the same person. You're going to continue to grow. Yeah. So I, I love, love that, that too. But one that I put on here is discipline is greater than motivation. And that's kind of a mantra that I like. That's a good one. And I don't know if you'd heard that before, but... <sighs> You're never going to wake up every day with the motivation to do something. It's always, and actually I learned this from Joe Rogan and listening to his podcast. I love his podcast, but discipline is greater than motivation. You're not going to wake up every day with the motivation to go to the gym. It's always, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. Yep. But if you do it anyway and you keep doing it anyway, then it becomes a habit. And then you don't even have to have the motivation to do it. You just do it. That's me. And it and makes I, you stronger. Oh, that's my total workout schedule. Oh, like yeah. it is get up, brush your teeth, get on the bike or whatever the fitness level I'm doing that day. Yeah. It is complete repetition. I don't want to fucking work out. No, nobody like, does. Nobody, I mean, if you do, that's awesome. But nobody like, does. I totally get that. Like it is all about that discipline and repetition, repetition. Oh yeah. And then once you get going, then you're like, ah, oh, I remember that feeling. That's mm -hmm. why I do it. Cause I like the endorphins are sparking and you yeah. feel so fantastic. And when you get off of it, you're like, or get out of your workout. You're like, okay. Like yeah. I have a clear clear thought oh for sure but it's all about discipline and everything and, and eating everything is eating. and this goes into what i put this on my snapchat story this morning and i had a few people slide up on it and say actually thank you for this like i got up and did what i needed to do because i heard you say this but i put on my snapchat story because i heard it again on joe rogan's podcast and i was listening this morning and he said um wait what did he say hold on what was the quote <laughs> Oh, you can't wait for your life to become perfect before you start living your life. So meaning you can't wait for the perfect time to, let's just use buying a house in this example. Mm -hmm. You can't wait for the perfect time to buy a house because it's never going to be the perfect time. If you're waiting for the perfect time, you're going to be waiting forever. forever. I think people say that about kids too, right? They, a hundred percent. And I always yeah. say there is no perfect time. There you're never going to have enough money in the bank. You're no. never going to have enough patience. You're never going to have a big enough house to, to, have all the kids just do it. Yeah. yeah. And we say that to our buyers all the time. Oh, for sure. In fact, so that is on your Maggie's vision board is that's her quote of the year. Yep. And we are still working on our mantra for the team. Uh, we have a few ideas like that. We're probably going to just combine and make merge. One. We're just going <laughs> to merge. We're going to create our own quote. <laughs> we are going to create. We'll let you know when we do. We are. And that's like on our, that's our, on our vision board of something that's going to mean something. And We'll say it every day and it will come true. And, Absolutely. You know, we'll report back at the end of 2023 and yeah. be able to hopefully tell you that, not hopefully, we will. We will. See, no we're hoping. The top. You we will. We'll be able to mark off all those checks, For you sure. know, all those things just like we did on 2022's board. So. Absolutely. But I do want to throw this out there too. You can't just write some goals down on a piece of paper and hope that they come true. Yeah. You have to wake up every single day with the intention to make your goals come true. So if your goal is to sell a million houses in a year, you have to wake up every day and be thinking about real estate, be thinking of a, of a way to That's a lot of houses sell a, a million yeah. houses in a year, you know? <laughs> like you have to actually put in the effort. It's not just going to come knocking at your door. You have yeah. to actually work for it. But if you do, it definitely, definitely will pay off. So we're strong believers. If hopefully you guys learned a little bit today from what our intentions are for 2020. 23 yep. um 
We're super excited. We are. I mean, it's what uh, yeah. the beginning of the month. We're only five days or six days in at this point. We have and a good start. We've got a great start. So we're feeling really strong and powerful. Mm-hmm. And hope you guys feel the same. Absolutely. DM us, message us. We love to hear what your mantras are or, or any of that fun stuff. We're super open. Okay. So we <laughs> hope that you really do get something out of this, whether it's a quote or even if you just liked our funny stories of the year, which I'm sure we will likely have more this year than we did last sure. year. But Take every day with good intentions and effort. To 2023, cheers. I wish I had some champagne to cheers, y'all. We wish the best for you. And just remember to be kind to yourself because it is stressful and life takes us by the horns, but we've got this. Absolutely. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers.